Whoa. All right, let's let's do something about this. All right. Okay, that's better. What you saw there is basically what's going on right now in the camera photography world. I think is happening. This is crazy. What? crazy and exciting and so much to talk about. I am I am really, really excited about all this new stuff. It's like camera Christmas. Hey guys, this is Chris with Kingship Tech. Welcome to the channel where we talk about tech gear, photography related for the amateur user. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing because we are going to be talking about a lot of photography related items, technology. I like technology, I'm kind of a nerd. Today is a crazy day. By the time this is posted, it'll probably be the next day, but regardless, this is all just relevant information. Holy moly, can you believe what's going on right now. I, I, I think it's hilarious at the same time. It's like, come on, C Canon and Sony, how hard can you fight? Are you guys going to go in a cage match or something? What's going on here? Well, let's talk about this exciting news. Stick around till the end, guys. I'm gonna, I'm, I have some exciting news that I'm going to put out for my next couple, I'm gonna work on it for the next few videos. The morning of, what, what today is August 28th. We finally get these leaked Canon cameras, the Canon 90D and the Canon Mark, uh, M6 Mark II, which we've been waiting for. We was getting these leaks like crazy. And so finally, they release them. Everybody's kind of like already expected the worst from Canon. I'm not sure what they're doing. They're, they're kind of hurting themselves. They're not putting their best foot forward. They're, they're I don't know. I don't understand the tactic they have because let me explain. The Canon 90D and the, is the predecessor of the 80D. The Canon M6 Mark II obviously is the M6 and that is part of their mirrorless line. The 80D was an awesome camera and it is an awesome camera. Still an incredible camera for anybody who's interested in photography and videography. I've considered this camera big time myself because it is a good all around camera. It's also expensive, right? For like a thousand dollars. Or if you get the body, you could probably shop around and get it for about six to seven hundred dollars body by itself. The 90D is supposed to be the predecessor and it's supposed to be better. Now, in a lot of ways, the 90D is better, but I just am sad that Canon is, like everybody talks about, is crippling their cameras. Now, everyone is going to talk about Canon and the 4K, right? It's all about the 4K. Honestly, I don't really care that much about 4K because I don't use it and I don't care to use it. I'm not going to use it anytime soon. I'm not running a production or a commercial or any professional grade anything right now. This is just my personal YouTubing video channel and, and HD is perfectly acceptable for me. I can work with that. But what bothers me the most is they're not even offering 24 frames per second, 24 FPS, like everyone's gonna talk about, in HD. It's just not there. It's There's 30 frames in HD and there's 60 frames per second in HD, but there is no 24. That is the standard, come on. That's the standard across every platform is 24 frames per second. Even the, the cheap cameras, the expensive cameras, they should all have that minimum. Forever they've been having 24 frames per second. I mean, old cameras have 24 frames per second. So the fact that they're not giving it is selfish. They're just selfish and they're being mean. They're being bullies, they're bullies. That bothers me a lot because I like 24 frames per second. It's the most cinematic, it's the most real feeling uh, FPS it's a video that you can do. 30p, 30 FPS, uh, there's a lot of people that work with that and Honestly, I'm not sure if you can see the difference. 30p is really good, 30, 30 fps is really good if you want to do just to barely uh, slow it down just a little bit. But then again, obviously that affects your audio levels. So the fact that they're not offering it in their cameras is a big letdown. The RP, big letdown. Obviously, like I, I know you can switch it over to PAL. 
probably the only saving grace right now that I'm even still interested is you can shift it over to PAL, which is like the internet, you know, east, other side of the world, basically, that records in 25 frames per second, which it has that in its camera. That bothers me. So I have the specs right here, and I'm gonna go through some of these together. I wanna talk about it together. You guys could post your comments down below of what you think. If you agree with me, if you like, oh, I don't care, 30, P is, 30 FPS is perfectly fine with me. That's totally great. This is just for what I use the cameras for, and I want to say, you know, maybe that's what you guys use the cameras for, maybe, and I suggest that you do if you're starting out. I think it's a good thing to, let's, let's move on. The specs, I don't want to go through everything. There's, a, there's actually already some really good and uh, technologically full t of technological information regarding these cameras. But I just want to talk really fast about what I think is valuable. So the Canon, Arm Canon M6 Mark II is really what I'm most interested in because I believe mirrorless is the future. Mirrorless is going to be what's going to happen next. I, I do think the DSLR is on its way to being extinct. I mean, Sony's been doing huge, huge strides forward. <laughs> We'll get there, Sony. Yeah, we're gonna get there. Sony's been doing huge strides forward with their full-frame mirrorless cameras, and they've been doing awesome. The Canon M6 Mark II is basically the same thing as the old M6, except with a higher megapixel sensor, faster uh, frame rates that you can capture. Oh, 4K, obviously, that's the biggest one. 4K, you can shoot in 4K, 30p, I think, without a crop. That's pretty cool. If you're into 4K, I'm not though. So that's that's. They did up the uh, megabits in the HD. So if you're wanting 30p or 30 FPS and 60 FPS, they did up the megabits in that footage. So it does, and it will look better. It'll look cleaner, you know, and that's really awesome. And the the M6 is was lacking a little bit. The M50 I think shoots in. 25. I'll find that for you and I'll post it in the video. But I'm I'm interested in seeing a high quality a high quality HD video. And it does 120, but you get a crop and no autofocus. Kind of like the M50 is, you get no autofocus and it's 720. But at least you get a full HD this time, just no autofocus. So if you're willing to manual focus, you get 120p. Most people will not use it though. I might dabble in it. The cool thing though is that it is coming, if you buy the kit, it comes with the EVF. This is a must, I think. You gotta have an EVF if you're into photography. It's just that much better. It helps you that much when you're composing your shots. You can see better. I mean, it, it really, really helps if you're wanting to do photography. If you're only into video and you're only into vlogging or if you're only into doing that kind of stuff, you probably can get away with just getting the body and adapting your your Canon glass if you already have Canon glass. This is the funny part. I did. I was not expecting this. I was not expecting. Morning of, Canon releases two cameras. The afternoon time, Sony releases two cameras, and really, completely, completely just crush Canon. When you're talking about specs, the Canon or the Sony cameras are in just that much better. Oh, I posted a video about the a6400 when it first came out and I was upset because it wasn't long after they released that that I had already invested into this Canon M50 and I had invested into some full frame glass just because I thought this was going to be the way. I didn't think Sony was actually going to give me what I wanted in a camera. And now invested quite a bit of money into this system, the Canon system, with, with intention of I don't know, upgrading. I'm still on the journey of finding, you know, an upgrade to this Canon M50. Uh, maybe full frame, that's what I would, I'm, I'm having this longing for a full frame camera. But really, Sony was just good. Like, really good. You probably really can't tell the difference, but when it comes to the specs, right, that is what you get. 1.5 times crop versus 1.6 times crop, so it's a bit wider. And Sony's always been a lot better in low light. This thing struggles big time in low light. So now all of a sudden Sony just cr is crushing it. Just crushing it. The 6100 is, I don't know, it seems exact, like super, huh. You know what? The 6100 appears to be like the A6000, but with a mic jack 
So the, the A6100 appears to be the body and the buttons seem to be more similar to the A6000 than it does say the A6300. The A6300 had some extra buttons. This is a pretty basic camera. So let's, let's take the A6000, you put a flip screen on it, and then you add a mic jack, and then you add some amazing other features like 120p at full HD, you get 24 frames per second. Don't let Canon know that, but they offer 24 frames per second. It's not that hard. If this camera <laughs> existed when I was still in the Sony market, if you don't know my background, I came from Sony. The only can or the only camera I owned was a Sony mirrorless camera. I started with the Sony Nex 6 when it first came out and then I moved to the Sony A6000 when that first came out and I thought that was an incredible camera. Then I started doing YouTube videos and I made it work. It worked great. You know, there was some hangups, didn't have the flip screen, didn't have a mic jack, you had to stick with the Sony microphone and the, you know, everything else, it, it really worked. The autofocus was really good. I, it, I just needed, I wanted that flip screen really bad. If this was there, I would have probably never left the Sony platform. I was used to the menu system, which they're insane. Now that I'm used to this Canon system, going back to the Sony, I'd have to relearn everything. Probably wouldn't be that hard. What I care about, what probably you might care about a lot, is the video recording for me because I do a lot of video. It does 4K, 24, 30, and 120 in 4K. Holy moly, 100 megabits per second. That's really good video. And then you have 1080 at 24, 30, and 60. But you still get 24 frames, 30, and 60 frames at 50 megabits per second, which is... Uh, still better than this camera most it has the insane eye detect for your animal for animal eye detect people eye detect in video and photography and, and photos incredible autofocus snappy it's super fast it locks on focus this camera the 6100 is for is 748 you can pre-order it but it's 748 dollars body only now if you already in the sony sony ecosystem that's not bad. I think they even offer the with the lens for, for another hundred bucks, so eight fifty, and you can have this camera. The only thing that I would want different about this A6100 is I would want um, custom mode, so I can so I can program like a 24p FPS and a 60 FPS and custom one, custom two, because so, I'm constantly going in between. If I want to do some B-roll slow motion, and then I want to go back to talking, then. A6600 they they went above and beyond Sony you did it you did it I think that probably is is not the answer to everybody's desire is the flip out right so that would be a that would be everything but this has a flip up so to me it's better. I would prefer a flip up screen over a flip out screen because I'm always catching myself looking over there. This is doable, let's just put it that way. The flip up screen is absolutely doable. I like putting cages on the camera to keep them even sturdier, safe, a little bit easier to hold. But they put a Z battery in this camera. Are you kidding me? They basically turned this into a APS-C A7 III. This is essentially an A7 III with an APS-C sensor. It's the same battery. You're, you're talking, you can go all day long filming and shooting pictures on one battery and it would be totally fine. I'm used to going through two to three batteries on this M50. When I had my A6000, I was going through two to three to four batteries with that thing. Plus, I was dealing with overheating issues every time I would use it. This thing is incredible. 16-bit recording with 14-bit raw file output for wire tone and color scale. Holy moly, this is insane. Wow, at 100 megabits per second. Guys, video recording, 4K, 100 megabits, full HD, 120, 100 megabits, 1080, up to 50 megabits per second, and 24, 30, and 60. This camera has everything 
that I've heard people wanting in the in a Sony camera in a camera. They want 4K, they want 120, they want good autofocus, they want a flip screen. How how can you not want this camera? It these two cameras totally crush Canon in every single way because Canon for some reason, I don't know why you're doing this Canon, but you're you're blowing it. You're not giving the people what they want. You're actually taking away. I think I would be more willing to buy an older camera, older Canon camera, than I would be probably to buy a newer Canon camera, because that's a lot of money I'm gonna be spending on a Canon camera. The M6 Mark II, uh, with the kit and everything, because it comes with the EVF, and I would want the EVF, is $1,099, $1099. Now, that's a pretty hefty price. The 90D, body only is 1200 but you know what? The Canon EOS RP, a full frame mirrorless camera, is $1,200, I believe. I'm pr pretty sure it's $1,200, body only. And if I was gonna put my money, I, I don't know if I could spend a thousand or $1,100. I don't know if I could spend $1,100 on a Canon M6 that has limitations when I can get a full frame that's, I mean, the EOS RP still has limitations, but at least it would be full frame. At least I'd be in the, into a RF system with those crazy lenses. Canon, what are you doing? To wrap things up, guys, this is just my thoughts. What are you thinking? If you're a Canon M50 user or a Canon mirrorless system user or even a longtime Canon shooter, does this make you want to go ahead and invest into Sony? Is this making, is it for myself? For myself, as a Canon M50 user, I have some Canon glass, full frame glass. My goal setting has always been around this Canon because, frankly, it's much easier to use. They're, they know how to program a camera, the settings, the menus, they know how to do it so it's easy to use. And honestly, I would 100% miss, this is the one thing now I, I can imagine, the only thing I would really miss is this touch screen on the side because I can easily change every setting by the touching it. With the Sony system, that is the only drawback, one of the only drawbacks, is you'd have to look at yourself, if it's not right, put it back down, change your settings, go back and make sure it's all good. When I had my Sony, again, I, I was just kind of used to that. It wasn't no big deal, but I've kind of been spoiled with the Canon, and I've had all of that available to me. So the first one was ease of use. Sony, you get used to it. Trust me, it's not the biggest deal breaker in the world because you do get used to those menu systems. So the 6600 has program, like a custom one, custom two programs. So it's kind of like the 6500 body, essentially, but with an A7 III internals, pretty much. Number two, the ecosystem, the lens selection. I was actually just doing a quick search on um, lenses, for, it's like, okay, if I chose to go ahead and move back into the Sony system for these cameras, for like the 6100 or the 6600, if I was going to invest into that system, how much more would it be to invest in some lenses, some good glass? Well, the only lens available for wide, really, I mean, if you think about the APS-C lineup, the only really wide one that you could get is the 10-18, to that's the one I would want. It's not fast, it's f4, though Sony is much better at low light than this is. So that's negotiable. But it's six five to six hundred dollars used, eight hundred dollars brand new. There's that, and I, I can live with that. The those my this lens right here was six hundred dollars, so I, I can live with that. It's not a terrible price when it comes to a pretty nice lens. But after that, it's what you have the Sigma no, you don't. People adapt the Sigma 18 to 35, so you really don't. The Sigma 16 millimeter is your other option. 400 bucks for that, not terrible, again. But after that, there is really not a lot of options when it comes to good quality glass for a respectable price. You're talking about $2,000 for the 16 to 35, you know, basically this lens, f2.8, constant. It's, it's a beautiful, it's probably a beautiful piece of glass for sure, but it's $2,000. Hmm, that's a tough one to swallow. I don't know, guys. I think I I am really on the fence here because I'm 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 wanting something. The M50 is an awesome camera. I probably have no reason to get rid of it. Besides, I'm ready 
for a more pro featured camera. I like buttons, it makes it faster for me. I probably am just a whiner or I like to get new stuff maybe. So I like the, the M50, I'm gonna keep it for a little while longer. Are you guys gonna think about switching? If you're in the Canon system, would this make you want to go ahead and invest into Sony? It looks like they're doing an outstanding job. The 66, A6600 is a beast of a camera, probably going to be the best, the best APS-C camera on the market. Hands down, it's gonna blow everything away. Even the X-T3, it's gonna blow it away. That's my opinion. So that's gonna sell like hotcakes. Canon, I don't know what you're doing. You better come up with a software update to save your butt. Give us 24p and people will be happier. I think people will stick with the Canon system and the ecosystem if you give them 24p. Okay, so I'm investing into another camera. I made a purchase and it, I'm possibly going to see if it's good enough to replace my Canon M50 for it, my new daily driver. I'm excited to show it to you. You're probably going to be shocked at the camera I picked to possibly replace my Canon M50. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Anyways, I'm not going to spoil. I'm not going to spoil it. Just wait for some videos. Subscribe. Make sure you follow me. And I'm going to go ahead and go put a camera that I bought in the Canon M50 head to head and see who comes out on top. And then after that, after I make that choice, I might sell everything and go to Sony. You never know. You never know. Alright. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this long video discussion. Write your comments down below what you think about this new battle for Canon and Sony and the market. Sony, I think, or Canon, I think you're in trouble. I think you're in trouble. See you guys later in the next video.